A lot of people have asked me, how do you sharpen a very long knife or a really long knife using the Hone Rolling Knife Sharpener? And I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Now, a lot of people have various knives and in the kitchen, I've got some big knives that are pretty long and some knives that are really long like this brisket slicer. The thing about these knives is that it's a challenge for some people when they have a knife with a very extreme tip like this to sharpen the tip. A lot of people have asked me how I do it, and I'm gonna show you how to ensure you get even sharpening on both sides of your knife, including all the way down to that tip with the Hone Rolling Knife Sharpener. Now this video is specifically for sharpening the tip. I'm not gonna get into all the grits you can get with the Hone Rolling Knife Sharpener because they have grits aplenty, ranging from 200 up to 2000, which is the new diamond disc, and then they have the 3000 Hone. Now on this, I've got the 2000 diamond disc and the 3000 hone because this knife is already pretty sharp. So I'm gonna just show you the process and take you through how I get this tip razor sharp. Now I've been able to do this with the base for the hone sharpener, but for the extra long knives, there's a challenge. And that challenge is when you put something up against here, you have a lot of knives sticking out here, which when you sharpen some knives, this one happens to be a very strong knife and very thick steel, but when you go up against the tip, it pushes the knife and you'll see that knife gets a lot of flex. In order to stop that flex, Hone came out with the extender, which is a brilliant piece of equipment that goes onto this. And yes, you can buy two Hone bases if you wanna pay the extra money for that base, but for a little bit less cost, you can have the actual extender, which helps you in various ways with long knife sharpening. Now the Hone base and the extender have a cutout feature this is actually used for the smaller knives, which you can see in my other home videos. Go ahead and just search Hone Knife Sharpener under my channel, and you're gonna see dozens of videos, including many of them on the Hone Sharpener, how to sharpen smaller knives. Now the extender has a cutout as well, but that is a reverse cutout so that it interlocks with the Hone base. You basically put these together, and then you've got a locking base. And as you can see here, that is solid. So for a knife such as this, where I wanna make sure that I have a lot of stability, this is a 15 inch knife. I'll go ahead and use the 15 inch side, place this down, and I can place this right in the center of this. And you're gonna see now with that blade, you're not gonna really get any bend. And if you do get a little bit of a bend, and this one I know really doesn't bend at all because I've done this before, I'm using the 2000 grit side on this. If you have one really long, such as this brisket slicer, then you wanna go ahead and separate these like so, and you will use the slicer on either the 20 degree side like this, or you'll flip it around for the 15 degree side. But I can then take this, place it up against the slicer, and I can bring this in up here, 20 degrees, push it in, and now I've got the support I need to sharpen these. I just basically can hold my hand down here. I can roll this all the way across. And if you take a look at this, it is rock solid stability. This is VG10 steel, which is very, very hard. So I'm using the 2000 grit on this one. We'll go five or six passes on this side. You can pull it off in a couple different ways. I can just rotate it like so and take it off. And I can turn it around this way. Or if you're not comfortable doing that, you can flip these around like so put this on the other side. I always start with the base, and then I go ahead and bring in the support after that, and I've got those now together. This magnet is so strong, it does not come off at all, even shaking it. That's what I like about the Hone. That blows away all the other rolling sharpeners is the neodymium magnets that are super powerful on here, and lets you sharpen without any type of flex or losing traction, or the knife you know, moving around on the sharpener. Now this knife is 15 degrees. So for the 15 degree side, I'm gonna go ahead and line this up where you'll see there's a cutout right here. You can see this cutout, okay? There's a reason for that. And that's because we're gonna take the 15 degree side with the cutout facing away from us. We're gonna place it down here. This has the 15 degree side over here. So we're gonna go ahead and place this down as well. And now we're set up to do the tip. The reason I'm set up to do the tip is because this cutout is so that you can actually get that tip without rubbing the rubber or the wood, because without that, and I'll show you that, 
you're going to rub and that's not what you want. You want to be on the blade all the time. We can do it with this. So we'll set this down. We're going to go ahead and get this 15 degree up on here and we're going to go right up to the tip, right behind it, and we're going to lock this in. Now with this cutout right here, this cutout piece up against here, we have no obstructions. So I can now take the 2000 and you can see right here how the blade is fully exposed without this edge sticking out. And we can go ahead now, we can rub across this like so, and we can do the honing like so. And when I do the tip on this, I'm gonna show you this way here. All you do is you, when you're rolling this, this turns really easily, see this? I'm just basically a little bit of pressure on this side with my thumb, so I hold it, I hold it like this. Thumb back here, two fingers on the front, and I just take this and I just basically roll this across. Now, when I wanna turn and get a tip, I can take this and apply my thumb pressure, which is my thumb naturally sits back here. I'm not having to move it or push it around. I just rest it naturally. And then I just add a little bit of pressure and then that will actually turn as I go. And you can turn, you, know, you can turn sharp if you want. You can make a very large arc like so, or you can do a very quick around the tip. So with this one, what I do is I basically take this and as I'm doing the honing, I just again, start pushing this like so. And you'll see here, I get the complete tip. And as I come down here, you notice there's no rubbing because that rubber's cut away. And I just start pushing this and making a little bit of a curve. And you can see that tip is all the way up against the ceramic honing disc, just like that. And if I'm using the knife mainly right here, I don't necessarily do the tip all the time. You can certainly do it, but I usually work on the areas where I know I'm cutting with the knife all the time. But I'll go down here and I'll give it a quick hone. And as you can see, I am turning it very slightly. If I don't turn it and you go out straight, people have said you missed the tip. And in this case, I'm so used to doing it, it just kind of turns automatically, but you're right. If you hold this perfectly straight and go straight out like so real slowly, you can see I have a little bit of a gap right there on the tip. So all I do is I just give a little bit of a turn right there and it's just natural. It just naturally flows with the knife. I've got the tip. So I can do this pretty quickly. And can you see it's curving? And look at the tip, there's no bend at all. Now, if I put the tip here, you still can sharpen it. I would probably move this down a little bit like so, and I could still do the tip, okay, and still get it to work, but this knife really isn't a super long knife, so this is actually not that difficult. Also, the type of steel that you get um, will make a big difference on it as well. Move it over to this side, and I can do this side as well with the tip, and I'm good to go. But some knives get a lot of bend. If I put it way back here, some people will say, oh, the knife bends, I'm using the sharpener and I get a lot of bend. Well, you don't have to put the sharpener right there. You can put it up and you can put it up as far as you want and you'll be just fine. But this gives you the stability in the back that you really want and then you can use that. So either way, but you can see here, you can see how that tip starts to bend. Okay, if I push on it because it's long, I get a little bit of a flex bend in there. Just don't press that hard. You don't need to press that hard, but you'll still get the bend when you do that. Now with this extender right here, 15 degrees, again, here's the cutout. So I keep my knife on this side for the 15 degrees. And if I go all the way down to the tip, I can get really down at the end here, still not hitting the tip. You can see how that goes below the rubber, goes below the metal, and that way, by doing this, I'm still coming across the knife blade, if you can hear that, with the ceramic, and I'm not hitting rubber. If we just use square, for example, this is 15 degrees, and I wanna get the tip on this really well, I have to bring this back, okay, which is about the same distance. When I go here, you'll notice that I actually can start hitting the rubber. The one thing that's great about this is you have these cutouts right here, Okay, for the smaller knives, so that you can get the tip on a small knife that fits in these grooves right here. And that's what these cutouts are for. You really didn't need them for the 15 or 20 degree on the larger knives, but because of the extension, they put the cutout in here, which is what you really do need to effectively sharpen the tip. So for this really long knife, this is my uh, Dalstrong, it's a uh, brisket knife. I go back here, and even if I hold it really tight down like this, I have tons, I mean, tons of flex on this thing. So if I'm going across this, it's pushing it out, right? Still, I still can get the end, it's okay, but there's that flex and you know, you wanna have the knife 
as, as stable as possible. So by taking this 15 degrees, we've got the extender going on here as well. Now I've got rock solid between these and I'll put this up a little bit. You'll see here, there's absolutely no flex or bend at all on this whatsoever. And that is how you would sharpen the tip of any knife, especially a knife that has the very distinct point like this knife right here, this knife right here, very distinct point. So you can do it certainly with just the hone base. It works very well. We just put it about the midway or three quarters point up, and then we'll go ahead and right where that blade starts to hit the top of that rubber will stop. And we can take this and actually go down to the tip and we'll start to roll in. So that's how you do the tip. It works very well every time, no problem at all. And if your tip is too low, these magnets are really, are really, really strong. You can go about halfway up and bring this down so the knife is actually up a little bit. You can see here how it's up. And you can go ahead and then you can do the knife and then make sure that that blade right there gets hit every single time. So I hope that answers the question on how you sharpen the tip of any of your knives. I need the same process for any size knife using the tip. And of course, with the hone extender, you can now do the super, super large knives like all of your slicers very easily for sharpening and also give you a lot of stability with the tip. But I also showed you the technique that you can use just the base as well to get the tip. However, I would re definitely recommend to get the extender because it makes sharpening just so nice with these longer knives and it costs less than this base. Please like and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think. And thank you for all those people who sent me those messages saying, Jay, how do you sharpen the tip? And I hope I gave you that solution in this video. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Smoke on, baby.